A leak at a nuclear plant in Minnesota has been re- I'm Colin Metzger with your weather today. It's looking pretty nice out there, sunny, um, kind of warm out. Today on Public Eye News, a Minnesota youth vaping trial of e-cigarette maker Juul opens, and later the death toll rises after an explosion at a chocolate factory. Colin Metzger will have your weather for the weekend, and Michael Cuddy will have your sports update. Hello, I'm Joe Sigourney. And I'm Michael Cuddy, and this is Public Eye News. In 1998, Minnesota got a landmark $7.1 billion from the tobacco industry, and now Attorney General of Minnesota Keith Ellison wants vape maker Juul to pay up. Juul has been settling lawsuits with other states and territories, 39 of them in fact, but Minnesota decided not to settle and they'll be going to trial as they are suing Juul for marketing to younger people illegally. Altria, a giant in the tobacco industry, has been added as a co-defendant as they were a Juul shareholder in 2020, although Altria, has, Altria says they've lost most of their $12.8 billion investment in Juul and have just finished their divestment this month. Ellison will be delivering part of the opening remarks before handing the case off to two outside law firms suing for $100 million. And moving to Minnesota's neighbor, Wisconsin, They've had their flags at half mast today after the remains of a World War II soldier were recently identified. The soldier was U.S. Army Private First Class William Laverne Sonny Simon, who, was, who will be honored from sunrise to sunset. Private Simon went unaccounted for in the 1944 World War II Battle of Hurtigen Forest, with his remains being discovered and labeled as unidentified in 1950. In 2009, in 2019, the remains were sent to the Defense POW MIA Accounting Agency, which were su successful in the identification. Private Simons will be buried today with full military honors nearly 80 years after his death. A leak at a nuclear plant in Minnesota has been repaired, and the facility is expected to return to service within a week, according to energy company Excel Energy. The fault, which allowed water contaminating, containing a radioactive isotope of hydrogen to escape, was fixed after the power plant was powered down. In November, 400,000 gallons of water containing tritium leaked into the Mississippi River from the Monticello Nuclear Generating Plant. A second leak last week, traced to a temporary repair to the first fault, did not pose a risk to public health, said Excel Energy. The Minnesota Pollution Control Agency and the State Health Department have sampled groundwater wells and found no evidence that the tritium has reached the Mississippi River or contaminated drinking water sources. An elementary school in Wisconsin canceled a first grade's class performance of a Miley Cyrus and Dolly Parton duet, Rainbow Land, promoting LGBTQ acceptance and claiming the song could be perceived as controversial. Parents in the district are outraged, saying the decision was made because the song encourages LGBTQ acceptance and references rainbows. School officials cited a school board policy against raising the controversial issues in classrooms and an age and maturity level of the students as, reason in, as reasons for canceling the song. This follows previous decisions by the district banning the display of rainbows and pride flakes in classrooms and suspending equity and diversity work. 
The Senate Banking Committee summoned the nation's top financial regulators to talk about what led the failures of two regional banks that sent shockwaves through the banking industry and U.S. economy. Skylar Henry has more details from Capitol Hill. Federal regulators tried to reassure lawmakers that America's banks are still in good condition. Our banking system is sound and resilient with strong capital and liquidity. The hearing was called in response to recent failures of regional banks Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Both sent markets tumbling, but federal regulators say SVB's problems were self-inflicted. This is a textbook case of, of bank mismanagement. Uh, the, the risk the bank face, interest rate risk and liquidity risk, those are bread and butter uh, banking issues. Regulators say they sent multiple warnings to the bank's management that it was at risk. But a viral run on the bank was too much to overcome. On March 9th, depositors at Silicon Valley Bank withdrew $42 billion in deposits in a period of just a few hours. Senators appear to be using the hearings for more than just oversight purposes. They're also taking the time to dabble in presidential politics. Republicans say rising inflation under President Biden was to blame. President Biden's reckless spending caused 40-year high in inflation, and the country, as well as the bank, experienced tremendous loss. While Democrats pinned the problems on former President Trump. The officials sitting board before us today know that their predecessors rolled back protections like capital and liquidity standards, stress tests, brokered deposit limits, and even basic supervision. They green-lighted those banks to grow and grow and grow too big, too fast. Democrats say they plan to try to pass new banking oversight laws. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And don't touch that dial. Colin Metzger will be back with your weather report, and I'll be back with your national news after this. What? <laughs> On Finding Your Roots, Jim Acosta. Your preconceived notions of where you came from, who you are, doesn't mean squat. And Van Jones. I knew that my dad's side of the family had a rougher path. Finding a founding family in Cuba. I wonder if they even know. I'm sure they don't know. And a DNA match. You would never guess in a million years. That's nuts! Finding Your Roots, only on PBS. Tonight at 8. Welcome back. I'm Colin Metzger with your weather. Taking a look behind me, it's looking pretty sunny out there, a few clouds and snow starting to melt. And taking a look at our weather across the UP, over in Houghton it is 32 degrees and partly cloudy, as well as in Ironwood it's 30 degrees with some more clouds. Iron Mountain cloudy, Menominee is also partly cloudy and 39, Escanaba is 39 degrees and sunny. And moving over to Manistique, it is 36 and partly cloudy. Sault Ste. Marie, 34 degrees and cloudy. And moving to beautiful Marquette, our current conditions are 34 degrees and partly cloudy. And winds are out of the north at 10 miles per hour with barometric pressure of 30.24 inches and falling. And looking at tonight, it will be a low of 22 winds out of the west northwest at 5 miles to 10 miles per hour. And tomorrow will be more partly cloudy skies, high of 25, low of 20, winds out of the northwest and moving at 15 to 20 miles per hour. And taking a look at our weather for the upcoming days, it's going to be a high of 40 and low of 30 on Thursday, partly cloudy, high of 35 and a low of 24 on Friday with some snow showers. And Saturday we could see some snow as well with a high of 28 and low of 18. And that's all I have for weather. Back to you guys. Thank you, Colin, for that weather report. And on Friday, there was a deadly explosion at a chocolate factory in West Reading, Pennsylvania, where seven people died and more were injured. The weekend was spent picking up the rubble and searching for survivors, but yesterday started the investigation into what caused the explosion. Chocolate companies are required to take extra precautions to lower the risk of fire and explosions due to the risk of cocoa powder and cornstarch. The West Reading plant has had one OSHA violation in the last five years, with an employee losing part of their finger with the plant paying a $13,000 fine. Two of the seven victims of this explosion have been identified, with the rest expected to be done by the end of the week. And in the state of Idaho, you can now be executed by firing squad as the state struggles to get their hands on drugs used for illegal injection executions. 
pharmaceutical companies have made lethal injection drugs more scarce, saying that they were meant to save lives and not end them, causing the governor of Idaho to sign a law bringing back firing squads, which had a veto-proof majority. Mississippi, Utah, Oklahoma, and South Carolina also have firing squad laws if other methods aren't available. Republican Idaho, Republican Idaho Senator Doug Ricks says death by firing squad is humane, with one member of his state party disagreeing and saying that it is beneath the dignity of Idaho. And people in Nashville and across the country are struggling to cope with another, school sh another deadly school shooting. This one at a private Christian school in Nashville Monday morning. A former student, 28-year-old Audrey Hale, is accused of gunning down three nine-year-olds and three school employees. We want to warn our viewers that some of the images in this report may be disturbing to few. Cristian Benavides reports from Nashville. Metro police, open the door! Nashville police released body cam footage of officers rushing into the Covenant School Monday morning. <laughs> Upstairs, they confronted and killed the shooter. Surveillance video captured images of the shooter firing through a glass door to enter. Police are studying a manifesto and maps left behind, hoping to understand what motivated the rampage. She uh, was a previous student. Uh, she had some connections there. Uh, the head of the school uh, was assassinated uh, in the hallway. Uh, so we, we feel it was targeted and planned. The victims, students and staffers at the school. Catherine Coons was the head of the school. Mike Hill, a school custodian. And Cynthia Peak, a substitute teacher. The students were all nine-year-olds. Evelyn Dickhouse, William Kenny, and Hallie Scruggs. These parents, their lives are changed forever today. Forever. Many people are stopping by this growing makeshift memorial near the school to show their support and express outrage over another deadly mass shooting. How is this still happening? How are our children still dying and why are we failing them? Police say the shooter was taken down about 14 minutes after the first 911 call. They believe the fast response saved lives. Uh, we uh, strongly believe there was gonna be some other targets, including maybe family members and one of the malls here in Nashville, uh, mm. and that just uh, did not happen. Police say the shooter had two assault-style weapons and a pistol. At least two of them were believed to have been obtained legally. Christian Benavides, CBS News, Nashville, Tennessee. We'll be back right after this. On American Experience. We should not risk a nuclear war in Vietnam. We learned pretty quickly that Nixon's secret plan was to threaten the North Vietnamese with nuclear weapons. There was a feeling like, what do we do next? We didn't think revolution was in the air. We didn't think the United States is going to change overnight. We were part of a long train of people trying to make things right. The Movement and the Madman on American Experience. Tonight at 9 on WNMU-TV. And welcome back. The NMU women's lacrosse team bounced back after a tough loss to the fourth-ranked team of the nation to beat McKendry on the road in a th close 13-16 contest. There's no surprise to anyone who was the leading scorer for the Cats. It was Minnie Battelle scoring six goals as the, NM the new NMU all-time leading goal scorer. Caitlin Bridger scored five goals for the Cats with Maddie Bast with Maddie Bast and Taylor Prisley each chipping in two goals themselves with Nat with Natalie McGinnis getting a tally. Northern was down 7-6 to six at half after, with an explosive second quarter and not, after not lighting the lamp at all in the first. The Cats then led 12-10 to 10 at the end of the third, scoring four goals in the fourth to keep the lead and win the game. And now, even without the Greek freak, the Pistons were no match for the Milwaukee Bucks, losing 17-126 to to in Detroit. Chris Middleton, Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez, and Javon Carter all scored north of 20 points for the Bucks, with Middleton leading the way with 34. Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis both hustled hard, grabbing 14 boards each, with Grayson Allen being unable to buy a shot last night, so he dished out seven assists. Jade Nivey, <coughs> excuse me, Jay Nivey fought back for the Pistons, scoring 34 points and being the only Piston to score more than 20. Ivy also had eight rebounds with eight assists. Jalen Duran and Marvin Bagley were the next two highest scoring players for the Pistons at 18 and 16, respectively. 
and with the Pistons now one loss away from 60. And after an explosive weekend of scoring, college hockey is down to its frozen four to be played next Thursday with the national championship set to be played next Saturday. That is all the time we have for you today with sports, sending it back to Joe Sigourney. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, that's all the time we have today for Public Eye News. I'm Joe Sigourney, and we'll be back tomorrow. See you then. Preceding program was produced by WNMU TV, Northern Michigan University Public Television, in studios located in Elizabeth and Edgar Hardin Hall.